Hey everybody, welcome back to my build of this LDO Voron 0.2 kit. Today we're going to tackle all of the electronics and wiring, hopefully get the whole thing done all in one episode today. It's going to be a bit of a different episode because rather than following along step by step with the Voron manual, which you see right there in the corner of the screen right now, um, I've had to kind of rearrange things and there's an LDO specific guide as well for this kit with uh, some changes to how they want you to position things and wire things up. And so I'm gonna be looking at both of those, but I'm probably not gonna show them to you. And so we're gonna take this off the screen and I'm gonna go through kind of in a bit of a different order, but hopefully get everything done in kind of a way that makes sense. Uh, you know, we'll tackle mounting all the hardware first and then wiring it all up. So before we get to that though, the first thing that we need to do is uh, put this sort of mid back panel in. So this just slides in to the back of our printer here. And I've already pre-aligned the, uh, the M3 nuts that we slid in long ago uh, onto the backs of those extrusions. And so all that we should have to do here is bolt this down to hold it in place. All right, so with that in place, um, now what we have is this back area here where we can put all of our electronics, and then also we have available to us the underside of the printer, right? And so there are four big things that have to go into this. Uh, you know, the first is the power supply, which is gonna go on the bottom of the printer down there. Uh, then we have our controller board. This is a Big Tree Tech SKR Pico. And so that's gonna go in the back area here. And then we also have our Raspberry Pi. Now this is a Pi 4. The LDO kit, the documentation says that uh, they expect it to come with a Pi 0, so mine must have been upgraded in some way. Uh, this is a slightly better version. Um, but their, their uh, directions in the manual, in the LDO guide, want us to put these two boards kind of in this sort of a configuration on the back of the printer. And they also provided us this nice plastic cable channel that we can then put this lid on when we're finished to clean everything up. So they want us to run this kind of up the middle here. So what I'm gonna need to do is kind of make sure that I've got good spacing around the outsides of these to be able to plug in all the cables and everything that we're gonna need. And then the way that we're gonna fasten these down is there are these little printable mounts. Uh, it's the same one for both of these boards because their screw hole patterns are the same. So this just screws onto there and then we're gonna also screw one of these little clips on the back of here. And so this clip, let me show you here, will clip onto one of these little plastic printed parts here as well, just like so. And so these are what we're gonna tape. So this I'm gonna tape into place in the right spot here, and then we'll mount those boards with these things and we'll be able to snap them on and off, which makes them easier to take off in the future if we ever need to uh, mount or to change how things are mounted. And so those two boards go there. And then we also have our Pico Bilical board. So this is the board for the 16 pin connector that's gonna go up through the umbilical to our tool head. And this board also had a printed part here that I believe it just kind of fits into. Like so, right? And this actually mounts in the very top of our printer, right up here. So this slides in here, and there's a couple of uh, heat set inserts that we've already put in on the underside of these parts here that I can screw that into. And so what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and with my VHB tape um, on the power supply and on the backs of these little DIN mount parts, I'm gonna position all of these things in the right spots and go ahead and tape them all down and get them all configured. And then we'll come back and start working on actually putting the wiring in place. All right, so we're back. I've got all of these components basically in their correct spots, right? So we've got this nice little channel here to run wiring. We've got our Raspberry Pi over here and our controller board over here. And then if I tip this up, maybe the camera can see the underside of the Pico Bilical board as well up here. And those are all nicely in place. Then down on the bottom of the printer, I've got 
another little wire channel that the LDO guide suggested that I put over here, kind of around the Z motor. I had to cut it at a weird angle to get it to fit, but that's what they wanted me to do. And then the power supply itself is stuck down here on the bottom of the unit with tape. So that is where we are. Um, just for your information, the LDO guide that I'm looking at looks like this. Um, it's actually quite good. They've got a bunch of diagrams for each of the different components for how you need to wire things up. And then they've got nice pictures like right here showing you know what I did there on the bottom of the machine, even with dimensions if you wanna measure and be very precise. Um, and I think it's important that if you're, if you're building a kit like this one, that you do follow the positioning guides for where they want you to put these things because this kit comes with, uh, you know, pre, pre crimped and pre cut wires and they're all labeled and everything, which has been great, but also they're cut to be the lengths to fit in certain places. And so if we don't position all of our components, how they expected us to, then the wires might not be long enough to reach. So that's just something to keep in mind. So if we scroll down here far enough, they also talk about, um, each one of the boards. So they mention specific places where you need to put jumpers and other things like that as well. Um, so, you know, like these two red jumpers here on the control board were requested there in that guide for me to put those there because we're using sensorless homing. So that lets it know that um, the end stop, you know, there's no physical end stops for it to trigger. Um, likewise, over here on the Pi, there's this little hat that is for the accelerometer for to run a ribbon cable up for input shaping, which we'll do eventually, but we don't run that cable. It, it's not there all the time. It's only there when we when we need to run input shaping. So we'll do that at some point in the future. So that just fits onto the, the uh, GPIO pins here on the Raspberry Pi. So there were a few things in that guide that I've already done related to, you know, making sure that jumpers are in certain places and stuff like that. So if you're, if you're building this yourself, definitely follow that guide and make sure that you've, um, you know, done everything that is listed there. I haven't specifically talked about all of those things. One thing though that I do want to do here is there's one, one or two pages in the official Voron instructions that we can follow here. Um, and that is, there's a little uh, exhaust fan or I guess airflow, you know, helper circulation type of a fan that mounts down here on the bottom of this kind of back extrusion. And so that shows us sliding this piece in here. No, it goes the other way, doesn't it? This piece goes up here. That makes more sense. And then this piece slides in here. So this just kind of clamps around this extrusion. And yeah, then I'm gonna use two M3 by 12s down through here to hold this in place. You know what, I'm gonna to need to remove this Raspberry Pi. So here's a good example of, I can just reach under here and unclip that, and this comes off just like that. And you can set it off to the side, and this is the part that's actually stuck on to that back panel there. All right, and then with that in place, we can take our very small little blower fan here and I guess the direction that the wire is coming out of it doesn't necessarily matter. I'm going to put it there because I think this is going to run up through this channel here and eventually plug in up here, right? So that should give us plenty of length. And we use a couple of M3 by 16s down from the top here to hold this in place. And then we can put our Raspberry Pi just back on here by just letting it clip onto that mount. There is some side to side motion as well. Once you get those in place, like you can slide this, uh, probably a total of maybe a centimeter or two from one side to the other. Um, so there is a little bit of play in how you position them, but they're pretty much set in place. So be careful when you're taping those little mounts down that you get them exactly where you want them to be. All right. So given that, I would like now um, to work on the power. So we've got our power switch here. I've got to go find all of the cables that connect from the power switch down here to our power supply. And then from the power supply up to, I believe that we're powering the control board and also the um, Pico Bilico board from down here. So I'm going to go find those wires and then I'll show you how we're going to run those.
All right, I've located what I believe are all of the wires that we need for the power delivery system within the printer. So first of all, we've got this power switch, which is gonna snap right into this opening here on the back skirt. And um, it came pre-wired partly. Um, and then this one additional wire here, I just uh, pressed onto these connectors. So ground, and then the brown goes with the brown and the blue goes with the blue. And these are going to go, once we get this fed through here, like so, they're gonna go down here to our power supply underneath to be its inputs, right? So we've got a neutral, a load, and a ground over here. So I'm gonna connect those up. And then this thing has two sets of outputs and they gave me two wires, one of them slightly longer than the other that are gonna provide power up into the back of the machine. So I'm gonna hook both of these up into the two pairs of outputs there. And I assume that the shorter one We'll go up here to our control board. Um, there's a power block right here in the bottom left-hand corner of it where we're, we'll connect that in. And then the longer one will come all the way up and we'll connect up into this power block that's right here on the uh, underside of the Pico Bilical board. And then um, to power our Raspberry Pi, they gave us this other very short cable. The Pico Bilical board has a five volt pass through. And so we're gonna come out of the five volt pass through right here. And then we're just gonna come down here to the five volt input on the little hat that we added onto the Raspberry Pi here. So I believe that with that cabling that I've just described, we will then have all of the power delivery in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that now. I will probably, for you guys, fast forward you through this or you know make it go real fast so that you don't have to sit here and watch me uh, just running cables and screwing things, you know, screwing terminals together. Um, the one other note is I'm gonna try really hard to, as I run these cables, uh, keep them within these channels and tuck them down nicely and kind of get their lengths just right so that everything is nice and tidy when we're done. So with that said, um, yeah, I'm gonna run some wires. I'll see you when it's ready to go. Okay, so this should all be set now. We've got our power inlet connected down here. Um, I do have a printed part that they gave me that's a little nice little cover for these terminal blocks here. So we'll go ahead and snap that into place so we don't ac accidentally stick our fingers in there. And um, then we've got our power running from here up through this cable channel area here and to here and there. And I've double checked the polarity on these to make sure that the red is in the right side on all of them, and then down to the Pi. So I've got the power cable that came with the kit, and I'm gonna, I've am gonna i got the other end of this already plugged in down here under my desk. We'll just do a quick power on test here just to make sure everything powers up. Obviously nothing else is connected yet, but we should hopefully when I turn this on, see things light up, right? So um, no smoke is coming out anywhere, which is great, right? We've got a uh, light here. I'm not sure if the lighting here on the desk is so bright. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little red light on the control board. There are little red and green lights up here at the top left corner of the Raspberry Pi. And this guy here has his power as well. So this all looks good. Everybody's getting power and the power supply down here as well has a little green light indicating that it's got power too. So everything's looking good as far as power. I'm gonna go ahead and power that off, unplug it, and I'm gonna go find next the uh, cables that we need to start connecting. I guess we'll connect these extruder motors in, um, or the extruder motor and the stepper motors in, and then all of our different 
things that came from our tool head, which are all down here. But uh, I think there's additionally a couple of other wires we need before I can get all that done. So I'm gonna go collect the wires that I need for the next step uh, to get everything here plugged together. And then uh, we'll continue on and get everything connected. All right, so it turned out there was only one wire that we didn't already have up here connected somewhere. And it's this one here to extend from our Pico umbilical board down to our control board for our stepper motor for our E-step. Um, I did find though in the motor kit that came with the LDO kit, uh, the, the box with the motors, there are these nice little tags here that allow you to label your A, B, Z, and extruder motors. Uh, we don't need this one because this extruder cable already has a label on it, but I am going to grab these stepper motors and label them A and B. So this one here on the left as you're looking at the printer from the back, so on the right as you're looking at it from the front, is the A motor and then the other one is the B. So I'm going to just put these on here now so that I don't get them confused mixed up in the future. Um, and then our Z motor comes from down here. We might as well go ahead and label that as well. All right, nice. And this little E we don't need. All right, there was in the last step one bit of power that I forgot about, and that is this, these two power uh, connectors, or this one power connector here with two leads that goes up to our bed heater. And that comes, that's supposed to come out of here. So I'm going to run this real quick, kind of up and down through there and back behind there and go ahead and plug this one in up here as well. So I don't know if you noticed on the sped up footage from the last little section or not, but I've found that in a lot of cases, it seems like it's easier when we're plugging things in, especially to this board here. It turns out to be, it feels like it's easier to just disconnect it off of its rail because it wobbles around a lot when you're trying to plug something into it. So I'm finding it simpler just to take it off of its connection and then tighten these things down and then snap it back on to the little plastic part where it's sitting here. There we go. All right, so now that should be all of our power run, including to the bed heater. So now we get to go through and connect up everything else. So we've got, let's see, coming down through our cable chain from up above from the bed area. We've got this bed thermistor, which I will run kind of up underneath here. And it plugs in where? To this top one here. So we'll go like that. Find a way for this to run through here so that it won't be making a mess. There we go. Um, then we've got our LED connector from the front of the bed. And that wants to plug in here, I believe. I did go ahead and uh, put the uh, connector on the end here as well. We talked about before that they had left these, these individual three wires were crimped, but the connector wasn't pressed into place so that it was easier to run it down through the cable chain. But I did go ahead and put that on. And I had tried to figure out like which, which uh, color wire should go where on that connector. It turns out in this LDO guide that I'm looking at um, that I will also link in the description of the video for you if you're following along, um, it was very specific about which wire went in which thing anyway. So I had gotten it right, but uh, if you don't wanna do the trick that I did to try to trace the wires and figure it out, you can just follow the instructions and that'll work too. All right, that looks fairly neat and tidy. Um, next, we've got stepper motors, I guess. So here's our Z. It's going to come up and around. I'm actually gonna run it underneath these other wires because it's gotta come over here to the other side and plug in from over there and it should be the bottom of these four connections. So these are our four stepper motor connections right here, the four main ones on this board. And it is, the Z motor is the bottom of the four. So it's this one here. Mm, yeah, I guess that'll work. Okay, and then we've got our A motor, which is this one here. These uh, wires were very, like they were curled up when it was packed, 
and they were almost tied in a knot, so I'm doing my best to try to straighten them out just to clean things up a bit. And once again, I think I'm going to go underneath to get around to the other side. All right. According to the instructions, they want the A down here next to the Z. So we'll do that. And then the B, which again, the wire's all curled up. It's just going to go right there. There's almost too much excess on this one. I will go ahead and loop it through here, even though it's kind of weird to do that, based on that it's coming from there right to there. But I'll go ahead and loop it through this wire channel over here anyway. And let's see, we've got our Z end stop, which is coming up from underneath here. And it goes into one of these connectors over here. I believe the bottom one. So that doesn't make sense. In the instructions, they have it going into this bottom one, but I only have a two uh, connection or a two pin connector here. So I'm gonna put it up here and we can probably adjust the clipper config later on to find it in that location because I don't want to wire a different uh, connector on the end of it. That's unusual. Let me know if you if you built this kit and run into that problem and I will also let you know whether that ended up being correct and what configuration I had to change to make that work later on. All right, and then we've got our this cable here which is the extension cable that comes from our peak obilical down here at the bottom of it. It's got a uh, four pin connector for the extruder stepper motor. And so I probably should have plugged this in before mounting this board up against up against the top of the printer here. But yeah, there we got it in place. All right. And so this one then goes to right there. All right, we've got a fan connector for this little exhaust vent fan here that still has to go somewhere. I'm scrolling down through the guide here, the LDO guide, to figure out where they would like us to put that. And the answer is what I had guessed originally, which was one of these fan lead connectors up here at the top. So just like so. And then we have our filament sensor which it looks like they want us to plug in right here next to our LED. So if that's the case, I'm gonna run this just over here like so. All right, and that's it, I'm out of wires. I have no more loose wires hanging anywhere on the machine. And so given that, I'm going to assume that we can put these tops on here and close this up. See, what mess? There's no mess. It's all good. All right, and then we do also have, we didn't end up using this one on this side, but we have little covers for these as well. All right, so that looks nice and clean. There's the bottom with the power supply, and then here's the back with our control board and our Raspberry Pi. Everything is plugged in, looks good. That's gonna do it for this episode, talking about just wiring up the electronics. We will power this all on and configure the software portion of it next. Um, in order to then get into testing to make sure that everything is connected and working properly. Um, but yeah, this is a good start, I think. And um, yeah, I think we're good to go. Looking forward to the next one when we will power this on and configure the software um, and get everything ready to print. I'll see you then. Have a good one. Wait, don't go yet. It's editing Mark from just ever so slightly in the future. There was something we forgot. There are these two USB cables and they go between the components here to hook them all up. So I'm gonna have to unbutton this nicely organized wire cable path here and try to figure out this. 
I didn't want to skip a step. I didn't want you to miss anything at all. So there's a USB-C connection on the underside of the Pico Bilical, which has to come down here to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, maybe I'll leave these out of the cable chain. They're black anyway. No one will notice. These wires are invisible, right? So we'll put this, this one here. And then we've got one more USB that goes from the USB-C port on the bottom of our control board here, our Big Tree Tech board. That plugs in there, and again, we'll come across. This one, I guess I'll just run across the cable path here, try to tuck it in. And this one plugs into just another USB port here on the Raspberry Pi. Trying to keep these cables and their connectors kind of out of the way of the path of the air that comes up from the fan because I assume this is mainly supposed to be cooling the Pi since that'll be the thing that gets the hottest, right? All right, so now we can replace this cover again. All right, and now everything is connected. Now we're hooked up for real. Those other two pieces of, uh, or those other two cables were gonna be important because if you don't have those, your components can't talk to one another and the software setup we we're gonna do next time would not work. So we're done for real this time and I will see you in the next one. Later.